since the NEH and since you've written your chapters and everything, has that influenced your, uh, your experience in the archives? Has it informed your teaching? I'll just start off just by saying like, I, again, fan of Bishop, but not a giant fan of Bishop before the Bishop archives experience, um, but, uh, or the whole archive experience. <laughs> um, but uh, basically I, I have taken to teaching lots of Bishop now that I've been around these people. I mean, I like, it's, it's really hard for me to be around people this convincing about what they love and not kind of pick up certain aspects of it as well as uh, uh, some see a giant massive bunch of documents like the archive and not be somewhat like bowled over by just the weight of that well i had two ex teaching experiences first of all i taught a, a grad seminar on bishop right after the archive experience and in fact um i uh i had uh shared some uh, uh preliminary drafts of the my essay with my students on the on the way to it, uh, though it wasn't wasn't any, anywhere in really great shape by then, um, and then uh, my last semester since I just um, became emeritus, um, I taught a, a seminar that I'd taught previously on five mid-century poets, including a Bishop, but also Jarrell and Berryman and Gwendolyn Brooks and Robert Lowell. And the book was out and available on the internet by the time I was teaching this class, and I made many recommendations. In fact, my class read Heather's essay um, together, and that was a really, really wonderful experience. Uh, I asked at a certain point, I was teaching a class on Elizabeth Bishop, and I asked you, uh, Elise, um, just for some images of From the Letters to Meth Vessel. And, you know, I think, you know, the ones with the Snoopy and the Valentines and the one with <laughs> cartoon Love Is. And I think, you know, it it did a couple of things, which I wanted it to, and I think it did them fairly well, is, well, it humanized this figure for the class, but it also put her in the context of, you know, culture at large, the era of Snoopy. I mean, my students probably can't remember those things, but, you know, um, it put her in a kind of refreshing context, I think. And on the other hand, things like the drafts um, in teaching close reading or getting students to think that changes in words, um, in titles, the kind of minutia of, of the poem can matter. I think the drafts are really convincing for undergraduate students, especially to show them that there's a lot of thought behind the choices and that sometimes tiny changes can make huge differences or can just demonstrate kind of the interpretive considerations behind putting a poem together. To build off of what Heather was talking about earlier with that amazing quote from Bishop saying like, yeah, I just kind of like wrote one art, it was super easy. Um, it's such a nice way to, to complicate for creative writing students the kind of ways that we mythologize like the genius and the ease of writing because you can show them all the drafts of one art where she's struggling and it's it's like a slog through like making these words rhyme and show them like yeah two drafts of your poem isn't going to cut it like this is hard work and it helps them see that <laughs> genius isn't just achieved overnight or in, in your first draft it's it's like slogged out over the course of many drafts i think it helps them feel more courageous in their revision process and it enriches the way that i can teach them about spontaneity in writing because so so Bishop famously says good poems have spontaneity, accuracy, and mystery, but spontaneity, despite what she might say in her like ways of talking about her own writing, is not a process; it's an effect. And we see that in one art when she adds in the the um, interruption, write it, which feels so spontaneous and alive, but was you know very methodically worked in. And so it's just a really great way to show students like you can create a spontaneous effect in a painstaking process and it can still feel really really real and human and spontaneous so it's been such a just the drafts of one art have been such a useful resource for me with working with creative writers and that first draft is just awful <laughs> oh it's terrible <laughs> yeah it's a hot mess and they're like is this real? did you just make this up is this real and i'm like no no this is really her poem like <laughs> 
Yeah, I think being able to show students um, the the labor of the margins in Bishop's poetry, right? I mean, I, I think of some of those first drafts of In the Waiting Room and, you know, there, there are moments I think in which she's writing in different inks and crossing things out and Xing things out with the typewriter and putting in alternate versions of lines and all the margins and, you know, the, the line from Proofrock, uh, decisions and revisions, which a moment or a minute will reverse, right? You can sort of see the poet in that fraught um, stage or status of, of writing. Um, and I think, I think being able to dram dramatize both for students of literature, but also for creative writing students, um, just how much work is there, um, but also to to catch glimpses of alternate versions of the poem, right? Like it's mm -hmm. really interesting to look at the fourth draft of In the Waiting Room and see a poem that could have been a much stronger, much more highly politicized sort of rebuttal of the rhetoric of war. Um, and then see Bishop very quickly um, retreat from that position in her fifth draft and mm -hmm. in effect sort of censor herself or at least opt for a different a different version of the story, a different um, vision of it, I think allows students to see that you might develop a poem or a story on several different tracks and then choose one um, mm -hmm. or um, reverse course and that it's not it's not a linear process toward toward the masterpiece. Um, and you reference um, you know the, the first draft of one art which, which I think students are so heartened to see that it reads like really bad adolescent prose poetry, right? It's, it's sort of not anything you would want to show anyone, you know? Um, and I think that's the gift of the archive is in some ways demystifying um, that kind of romantic ideal of, of just sort of downloading this wonderful bit of inspiration um, into the finished poem. I had, I had long taught um, Anne Lamott's shitty first drafts from Bird by Bird, her book on writing, and she's telling student writers, you have to write a really bad first draft before you can work your way to the good ones. But they don't, they, they never believed it until I started pairing it with the sequence of drafts of one art. And then it was not just telling them, but showing them like, no, this is true even of one of the best poets of all time. Like this, this there's no shortcuts here, um, at least for most of us. And so they could, they, they really started to believe it. And, and yeah, I, I like how you put that, Heather, like just take heart in the fact that like, you know, even Elizabeth Bishop had to had to work through her dress. That's an inspired pairing, I just have to say. <laughs> it really is. Because I've, I've used both, you know, I've used one art in, in the same way, and I've used shitty first drafts, but I've never used them together. And I will now. Because <laughs> it just makes the point, doesn't it? It does. That's great.